everyone. Welcome. I am excited to talk with you today about the Gilman Scholarship. I'm Dr. Quinto. I work with the Nationally Competitive Scholarships Advising Team at UNG. And Dr. Lynn and Dr. Hightower and Mandy Lacito, we are all here to help you find and apply for Nationally Competitive Scholarships. If you haven't already heard about Nationally Competitive Scholarships Advising at UNG, we are excited to work with you and help you learn more about Nationally Competitive Scholarships, and we're here to help you apply. But today, we are going to focus on the Gilman Scholarship. I'm really excited to talk with you about the Gilman Scholarship, so let's go ahead and get started. So the Gilman Scholarship provides funding for study or internship abroad. And many, many UNG students are eligible, and we have worked with many UNG students who were successful with receiving the Gilman Scholarship. To give you a quick overview about some important eligibility points, I want to let you know that, first of all, you need to be receiving a Pell Grant, and you will also need to be a US citizen to apply. Now, the Gilman looks to support students who are typically underrepresented in study abroad. So this is including but not limited to first-generation college students, students in STEM fields and majors, uh, ethnic minority students, students with disabilities, students who are currently associate students in addition to bachelors. So it's good for you to know that Gilman has a particular focus on supporting students who are underrepresented in study abroad. Moving on, um, it's also good for you to know that if you are a current associate student at UNG, then your study or internship abroad will need to be at least two weeks in duration to be eligible to apply for the Gilman and welcome everyone who's just joining us. Now, if you are a current bachelor student, then your study or internship abroad will need to be at least three weeks in duration. So that covers some of the eligibility details and anything and everything that I cover today. If you have questions about any of it, of course, we are here to help with Nationally Competitive Scholarships Advising at UNG. Now moving on, let's talk a little bit about that financial piece. So as I mentioned, Gilman will help to fund your study or internship abroad, but you may be wondering how much? Um, up to $5,000 toward that study abroad. And if you are going abroad to study a critical need language, so these are many of the languages uh, spoken outside of Western Europe, then you could be eligible for the Critical Need Language Award, on, which is a part of the Gilman Scholarship, but that would provide an additional $3,000. So this is funding for up to $5,000, potentially even up to $8,000 for those of you who are interested in studying a critical need language. Moving on, let's talk a little bit about the Gilman Scholarship application. So we are here to help you not only find out whether you're eligible to apply for Gilman or one of the many other nationally competitive scholarships we work with, we're here to help you prepare the application as well. So once you find out which scholarship you're eligible for, let's say that you're gonna go ahead and apply for Gilman, then we are going to meet with you to talk with you about your interests, not only your major, but also your academic journey and what you're interested in studying and what you're interested in doing. And then we'll help you talk about that journey to this study abroad and how you want to write your essays about it. So the application is comprised of an online form and a, a really important part of that are two essays that you'll write. So we're gonna be meeting with you to really help you brainstorm these essays, get them started, and then every step of the way. So as you prepare the essay, every draft we can provide feedback on. And with each draft, your essay will become stronger. So we're here each step of the way and helping you to prepare and strengthen those essays is a really important part of what we do and the support you, we provide. 
In addition to the online form, the essays, you will include your transcripts. And I wanted to point out some important advising um, that not only we are providing, but also our colleagues at UNG. So you will also be meeting with your study abroad advisor in the Center for Global Engagement at UNG. If you haven't already met with one of our colleagues in CGE, um, it will be important that you meet with them as soon as possible in the process, but also they are experts and provide invaluable information on study abroad. So this will really help you choose and plan that study abroad. You will also need to meet with one of our colleagues in the financial aid office. So both the financial aid advisor and the study abroad advisor, once you actually submit the Gilman scholarship application, will certify it. So you will need to meet with both of them as well. Now we are excited to work with you on those essays and on that application, and we will be collaborating with these colleagues on campus. So we're really your team and we are here to support you each and every step of the way. Moving on, we want to let you know that starting early is a very good idea. So Gilman has two deadlines each year. One is in March and one is in October. And October might seem a little ways away right now, but we wanna let you know that it's not too early. In fact, the most successful applicants start early and they work with us um, through several essay drafts. So that's why we really want you to schedule an appointment as soon as possible. We're here this summer. Of course, we'll be working with students throughout the fall and spring, and we're doing virtual advising right now. So we schedule advising appointments through Team or Skype or your preferred platform. And then we really work with you to help you get this started. So we wanna let you know it is not too early. Um, another really important part of the Gilman, as I mentioned with those two deadlines, is that if you don't receive it the first time you apply, you are eligible to apply again. And what our data has shown us is that applicants who reapply have a higher chance of receiving it. Um, in addition, applicants who work with our office are most successful we are really going to give you that expert feedback on those essays and help you prepare the application. So keep in mind that it's not too early and it's actually the perfect time to reach out to us. Um, we will remind you of this later, but you can email us at NCS, Nationally Competitive Scholarships, NCS at ung.edu. Um, you can also schedule with us using the advisor scheduler the same way you use that link the portal to schedule an appointment with your academic advisor. We are there as well. So let's talk just a little bit more about the essays you will be writing. Um, as I mentioned, there are two essays, and if you are applying for that Critical Need Language Award, there's a third essay as well. Um, and these are rather short, and so it's really our job to help you say everything you wanna say about your academic journey and why you're excited about study or internship abroad in um, a brief and concise and polished way. So the personal statement is going to ask you about your choice of country and how it fits within your larger plans. That's one essay. And the community impact essay asks you a little bit more about your relationship to community, um, both here and how you envision that when you're going abroad. Um, there's also a follow on service project, which is basically when you come back and share some information about your study abroad and about Gilman. And we can work with you on that as well, on planning that. We've worked with many Gilman scholars um, to help them organize their follow-on project. And then the critical need language essay, if you are applying to study a critical need language, will be your third essay talking about your focus on that language. So you'll be writing either two or three essays, and we are here to help. Now, quick reminder that that October deadline is going to be here before we know it, because we all know that once classes uh, start at the beginning of fall, everything goes by very quickly. So we really want you to work with us on this application over the summer. It's best to get a head start. Um, and 
The great news about Gilman is you can apply for the Gilman Scholarship up to a year before your study abroad would actually begin. So you can apply very, very early. And we can work with you on that long-term planning, working with our colleagues as well in the Center for Global Engagement as you choose that study abroad program. So we want to work with you and we hope we get to meet with you this summer. We can schedule that virtual advising appointment. As I mentioned, it is not too early. And just a quick uh, celebration of how wonderful UNG students have done with the Gilman Scholarship this year. Over 60% of our applicants received it. So this is an amazing number. So many UNG students who applied received the Gilman Scholarship this year. In addition, we wanna let you know we had 27 recipients this year, and we're so excited for these Gilman Scholars. So you can be one of them too. We want you to think about the Gilman, or maybe you're not sure about eligibility and interested in other scholarships, just schedule an appointment with us. We'll talk with you about which scholarships might be a fit and how we can help you apply. And we are 100% here for you. We're your team when it comes to these nationally competitive scholarships. Now, quick reminders that Dr. Lynn and Dr. Hightower and Mandy Lacito and I, Dr. Quinto, are all here to work with you on these applications. And we want to meet with you soon. But on today's Instagram Live, I am very excited to introduce a special guest. So Natalie Morales Villa is a Gilman Scholar from UNG, uh, also a recent graduate of UNG who is now an admissions officer. And Natalie has such amazing insight and experience to share. So I am going to pass the baton to Natalie in just a moment but at first I wanna make sure, does anyone have any questions before Natalie takes over the Instagram Live to share that firsthand experience as a Gilman Scholar? Is anyone wondering anything at all about the information that I covered, Gilman Scholarship or nationally competitive scholarships in general? If you have a question, feel free to share it in the comments. But otherwise, just a quick reminder that you can contact us through the Academic Advising Portal or at NCS, Nationally Competitive Scholarships, just NCS at ung.edu. So I don't see any questions coming up, which means I am getting ready to sign off and in just seconds, uh, Natalie Morales Villa will be taking over to talk about her experiences as a, as a Gilman Scholar and to talk with you about what this process is really like. So thank you all for joining us and excited to uh, hand over the mic to Natalie. Hey everyone, my name is Natalie Morales as Dr. Quinto was saying. Let's see, it looks like I'm having a bit of an issue logging on. Oh, there we go. I can see Dr. Lynn say hi. Hey everyone. Um, so as Dr. Quinto mentioned, I was a Gilman Scholar for the 2019 cycle. A little bit about my background, I studied political science and a minor in Spanish translation. I decided to go to uh, Peru for my study abroad program. It was five weeks long. I stayed with a host family. They were absolutely amazing. My favorite parts about Peru were not only the culture, seeing the similarities between Mexican and Peruvian culture, but also the food is absolutely delicious, the geography. During my study abroad experience, I was able to go to Machu Picchu, to, uh, to Rainbow Mountain. I also took pictures with llamas and I attended La Universidad Andina del Cusco. And I got to meet other students from throughout the world and throughout Latin America that were also studying there. So it was an overall amazing experience. But how did I get there? Uh, how did the Gilman Scholarship help me get there? So I first found out about the Gilman Scholarship through the Nationally Competitive Scholarships Office my sophomore year of college. One of my biggest barriers for studying abroad was the financial aspect. When I first wanted to study abroad and I looked up into the cost of the programs, most of them were thousands of dollars and I was like, mm, this is probably not going to happen. But thankfully, I scheduled an appointment with Dr. Lin. She told me about the Gilman Scholarship. And I actually applied for it twice. 
Uh, keep in mind that the number one requirement is that you are Pell Grant eligible. Thankfully, I was. And then Gilman is also looking for students that typically don't study abroad. So whether you're a first generation college student, uh, whether you come from a rural area, like most of us that go to UNG, whether you come from the South, whether you're the first one in your family to go to college, whether you're a low income student, these are students that typically don't study abroad. And that's what the Gilman Scholarship is there for. My biggest tips for those of you that are looking into Gilman is please start early. The sooner the better. One, because you find out about the requirements. Two, if you don't get it the first time, then you can go ahead and reapply. Uh, in my case, when I first looked into it, I was still a permanent resident. You do have to be a US citizen. So I had to wait even longer so that I could obtain my citizenship and then apply to the Gilman Scholarship. Uh, the neat thing is that Dr. Quinto and Dr. Lin are really, really flexible and super helpful throughout the process. The first time I applied for Gilman, I was actually doing an internship in D.C. So I would send over my essays to Dr. Lin. She would give me feedback. Unfortunately, I did not get my essay revised as many times as I should. So the first time that I applied for Gilman, I did not get it. <laughs> um, but again, I decided to reapply again and I got it in 2019 and that helped me cover my trip for Peru. I was able to get $2,000. And another thing that students usually don't know about studying abroad is that Pell Grant covers it, the HOPE Scholarship will help you cover it, and the Gilman Scholarship. And we also have other offices within the GLO Global Engage. We have other offices within UNG. Uh, the Global Engagement Office that can help you find other scholarships from UNG to study abroad. I can tell you that if it hadn't been for the Gilman Scholarship, I probably would have thought twice about studying abroad just because I didn't want to get any student loans. But with a Gilman Scholarship, it was the uh, icing on the cake and I did not have to pay for absolutely anything. Another really neat thing is that throughout my Gilman application, I was able to do it with other friends that were also studying abroad, so Jimena and Udi's, and it was really, really neat to get together, write our essays, give each other feedback, you know, sometimes have those thoughts, oh no, like, what if I don't get it, or how can I write this better, or, you know, Dr. Lynn is probably, you know, tired of seeing my essays, but they're not. Dr. Lynn and Dr. Quinto are super patient, they're amazing, they'll try to give you as much feedback as they can. They will really, really look into your essays. They will absolutely transform them and make them into a magical essay that will help you win a nationally competitive scholarship such as Gilman. Uh, other advice that I have is that don't fear that because you don't have a major that's typically represented within the field of, <laughs> of studying abroad, that you won't be able to find a program or that you won't get Gilman. I'm talking about, let's say you're not a language major, right? Language majors are usually the ones that do get to study abroad. But even if you're in STEM or let's say engineering, one of the sciences, please go to the Global Engagement Office first. They will try to find a program for you. And the neat thing is that most programs give you actual credit for your major, whether it's for a minor, whether it's for an elective, they will find a way to try to get you credit. In my case, I took three classes during my study abroad experience. Usually you'll take two classes at the country that you're studying abroad at, and you'll either do an online class or you'll do a class with a professor. They usually send a professor over with you. So it's really neat. You're not alone throughout your studying abroad experience. You always have a UNG professor or a UNG representative. You usually go with a group of anywhere from five to 20 people. That way you have that support system. Okay, nice. Okay, it's great to see people that, that are logging in. Please ask me any question that you might have. And Dr. Lynn just said, Dr. Lynn is never tired of essay drafts. Thank you, Dr. Lynn. <laughs> yes. Uh, so like I said, I was able to study abroad in Peru. I was a political science major with a minor in Spanish translation. I just graduated from UNG last year. I am an admissions officer. Please ask me questions about the Gilman Scholarship. Uh, like I said, my biggest recommendation is please start early. If you can start a year early, that's even better. Just because it can be a little bit of a long process and there are going to be times when you're like, oh my gosh, I am so exhausted from writing so many essays. These are so many drafts. 
I think in my case, I gave Dr. Lin over six drafts, and it was just a matter of going back and forth with each other, and she's awesome. She really will transform your essay. Dr. Quinto as well. Dr. Quinto is super sweet. At the end of the day, they're there to walk you through it and give you the best constructor criticism so that you can obtain a nationally competitive scholarship like Gilman. Uh, another thing that I do want to know is that once you get one scholarship and once you visit Dr. Quinto's and Dr. Lin's office, we have this joke going around that you kind of belong to them forever, even after you graduate. So now that I got the Gilman Scholarship and that I got to study abroad, I'm applying for Fulbright. Um, if you have more questions about the Fulbright, I know that they're doing sessions later on about it. But again, please, if you have questions about the Gilman Scholarship or in general about studying abroad, I got to study abroad twice, first in Spain and then in Peru. In Peru, I was able to get the Gilman Scholarship and everything was paid for. So there are scholarships, there are opportunities. Um, don't be afraid to schedule a meeting. Really, even if you're not sure if you want to study abroad, schedule a meeting with either Dr. Quinto or Dr. Lin. Tell them a little bit about your background, what you want to do. They'll see if you're eligible for Gilman. They'll see what other scholarships you're eligible for. But again, the biggest recommendation is just apply. Just even schedule a meeting. Look into the Gilman scholarship right now. Um, and if you have questions, you can always send me a personal message. You can schedule a meeting with Dr. Lin. Oh, see, Dr. Lin just asked a question. Besides starting early, what would be another piece of advice you might give students? So definitely try to see if there are other people that are applying to the Gilman Scholarship or other people that are studying abroad. That way you can encourage them to apply to the Gilman Scholarship. Because I know that sometimes it can be intimidating to send over essays and it can be a little scary to get feedback and you're thinking, oh my gosh, like I'm not the greatest writer, writing isn't my strongest suit. Have your friends review your essays. Um, it's a little bit less intimidating coming from another student. And also it can be really, really encouraging. In my case, I was getting, I was writing my Gilman scholarship essay with three other friends of mine. So that really helped me just get other ideas, see how they were structuring their essays, see kind of like what they attributed to their program, why they wanted to study abroad and the program that they chose. Okay. And again, don't be afraid, at least ask about it. Don't, don't limit yourself. I know sometimes it can be hard, like, oh my gosh, like, what am I going to do about the money aspect, or I'm not the greatest writer, at least give it a shot. Mm -hmm. Start early. If you don't get it the first time, reapply. Just don't give up. Surround yourself by your friends. Uh, in my case, I was actually with my friend when we got the email saying that we both got the Gilman Scholarship, and it was super, super neat because we got to celebrate together that we got Gilman. Let's see. Oh yeah, and Dr. Lin is asking, is Gilman only for summer study abroad? Nope, it is not. You can study abroad either during the summer, during the fall, or during the winter. In my case, I did study abroad during the summer. Depending on if you're an associate student or a bachelor student, you can, there are limits I know as to how long you have to study abroad. And again, this is why it's good to look into all of this early. So you can plan ahead, you can schedule your meeting with the Global Engagement Office, and then you can schedule a meeting with the Nationally Competitive Scholarships Office. Mm -hmm. But like I said, if you have any other questions about studying abroad in general or the Gilman Scholarship, please, you can send me a personal message. I also work for UNG, so you can find me on the UNG website. Just type in UNG Natalie Morales Admissions, and you can find my contact information. Okay, and... Hey everyone, it's nice to see everyone that's saying hi. Okay, well it looks like there are no other questions, so I am going to go ahead and say bye, but please feel free to reach out to me, and everyone, please have a good day. Bye!